Stephen Spano, entitled uh, Rethinking a Traditional Domain Occupation. Uh, the first um, communication of the panel uh, is by Anna Sergol Paradis and Petra Kristen Koren. Yeah. Um, um, both of them are from the University of Ljubljana. Um, and just a brief presentation of the two authors. Anna is uh, assistant professor for history at the Department of History and Faculty of Arts at the University of Ljubljana, and she teaches uh, general <coughs> history of the 19th century. Um, her research interest regards especially history of science social history, gender history, and genetics, and the history of medicine. Um, she um, works and makes her research in the framework of ABNet projects. Petra is a research fellow at the Institute of Cultural History at the Research Center for Slovenian Academy of Science and Arts, and her fields of interest include uh, biographical studies, history of everyday life, gender history, and oral history. Uh, their communication is entitled First the Trieste and Slovene Servants After World uh, War uh, I. After and I would like to remind to our speakers, to our ladies, that they have 15 minutes for their communication. Mm -hmm. So please. Thank you. Thank you. So, in the next 15 minutes, you listened about Kurs, Trieste, and the expansion of Slovene servants after the World War I. In examining the modern phenomenon of domestic work, which is heavily dependent on the international female migration and the plethora of legal, social, and economic issues this brings, it is necessary to use a global approach, as shown by many authors from Salazar Paredias, Echenwey, Rassen Hochschild, to uh, Paul Chamonix, etc. Um, at the same time, it proves to be frugal to take a longer historical perspective in analyzing this problem. Past experience, patterns, and models from different geographic areas all make an important contribution not only to the interpretation itself, but also to the attempts of addressing the modern global changes of domestic work. From this perspective, Trieste proves to be a fruitful case study as a town that faced mass migration in national friction during the Habsburg period, and later in the 20th century even changes in borders and political regimes, it is an example that raises similar research questions as those raised in the case of domestic work by the global labor history. So, our baseline uh, research question today is, how the status and work possibilities of Serbian women servants in Trieste first changed after the World War I with the fall of the Habsburg Empire and the newly established border between Italy and the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenia. To uh, say a few words about methods and historical sources, we compared the population census of 1910 to that of 1921. 172 house numbers in Trieste's dominantly rich district Borgo Teresiano were analyzed, as well as periodicals and archival material. Here, special thanks to Matteo because he was really helping us. Uh, and now the question, why, is the topic um, especially interesting. Because the servants in this area represented a politically important population category before the war. Seen from certain angles, they were anything but invisible. Actually, first, because they were, just like many other European cities, numerous, and the vast majority of them were women. And secondly, due to their specific migration routes. Let me explain. <coughs> Trieste saw in the period before the war a large influx of servants from the Austrian Littoral, Eastern, and particularly the province of Gorizia as well as from other nearby Austrian crown lands, especially Carniola, where Slovenes constituted the majority of the population. Servants came also from neighboring Italy, particularly from Friuli. The increasing number of Slovene servants in the city attracted the interest of Slovenish nationalists, who, as representatives of the largest national minority, sought to assert their interests in face of Italian majority. This 
became evident particularly in the period of population censuses, when Slovene nationalists extensive propaganda aimed to get the servants to express their loyalty by identifying Slovene as their language of communication in the census sheets. Thus, the nationalists sought to prevent Slovene servants from succumbing to assimilation effects of living and working in Italian families. They saw this as especially important also because servants as women were considered as cultural and biological reproducers of the nations and imagined as boundary markers. Italian nationalists, on the other hand, made efforts to retain national loyalty of servants from Italy, who often did not hold Austrian citizenship and were along with other migrants from Italy granted a special status by the city, the so-called Pendicoli. Both the Italian and the Slovenes tried to get the servants on their side by establishing special organization for their protection. However, the question of how successful this endeavor was remains. Servants' choices, to some extent, show a different practice that expected by the nationalists. A certain number of servants did not give any importance to the nationalist propaganda and leaned their choice on their own survival strategies and the logic of the labor market. Many of them also developed a more personal relationship with their employers and got attached to their families. Although, Slovene servants did not just succumb to simple power relations with Italian masters and underwent Italianization. Instead, they mediated between the two different cultural and national worlds. As sources suggest, they were still connected with their communities of origin. According to Marta Virginella, they did not act only as boundary makers, like the nationalist propaganda wanted them to, but more as cross-boundary mediators. Here emerge, as Elisa van Nader very Mürke pointed out, all those, I quote, ambiguities of working and living in the households of others where distance and intimacy were intrinsically entangled, end of quote. However, how all of this changed after the World War I? The first striking change was their absolute number in the city. In 1910, 38.6% of households in our sample employed servants. In 1921, 23%. <coughs> This demonstrates that in the period in question, the number of living servants in Trieste somewhat decreased, which is undoubtedly also a consequence of the war, or at least war worked as a catalyst for changes. But after the war, potential employers also lacked resources to hire servants. On the top of that, many servants were still refugees. As demonstrated by the archival material, the authorities and also the household masters encouraged them to return as soon as possible, which holds true particularly for refugees located in Italy. The problem of the decreased supply of housework in Trieste was addressed also by the local press. The periodical Edinost Unity stated that women had got accustomed to better occupations during wartime and that they were deterred from working as servants also because they received war-related benefits. <coughs> we must also consider the, the difficult post-war situation, social unrest and the strike movements that sought to improve <coughs> the situation of workers in general. Edinos, for instance, published Maria Manfreda Skriniar's <coughs> efforts to sensitize a broader circus of people and restore the care network for servants, but Unfortunately, these attempts quickly ended due to the lack of support, even from the Slovene elites, elites who themselves had to face increasingly greater pressure from the Italian side. Although the, num although the number of servants was reduced, many of their demographic characteristics were uh, not changed by the war. Um, in terms of marital status, the demographic structures of Chilistina servants did not undergo a significant change between 1910 and 1921. The average age of the servants also increased only slightly, growing from 28 in 1910 and 31 in 1922. Yeah. There was, 
however, another important change in terms of their place of birth. <coughs> Compared to 1910, in 1921 saw an increase in the percentage, uh, percentage of servants born in areas that were part of Italy already before the war. The share of servants born in Istria is larger. The number of servants born in, provi in the province of Gorizia, Gorizia is lower. <coughs> Presumably their share decreased at the expense of the population forced to leave <coughs> refugees and did not yet return yet. It was first and foremost the share of servants born in Carniola, Styria and Carinthia that decreased. We will pay special attention to this group of servants since they support the thesis that the modification of border immediately disrupted the traditional migration flow of Slovenes, particularly Kornilian women servants to the city. Such a reduction, however, was not only the result of obstacles that usually arise in changes to the national borders, such as passport acquisition, identification documents, etc. The Italian authorities began also to encourage the immigration of Italian servants immediately after the war and deliberately sought to restrict the immigration of Slovene and German servants. For example, in February 1990, the civil commissioner of Trieste and the territory wrote that Italian refugees who had worked as Rinicole in Trieste before the war had to be given priority over servants of other uh, nationalities. In his opinion, this would be politically appropriate because the Italian national element would thus reclaim the old line of work in Trieste. The governor replied that he would do anything in his power to replace Slovene and German servants with Italians. This appeal vo voiced by the com civil commissioner in February 1919 evoked a strong response. Consequently, many servants from Carniola and Styria were given refusals. The position of servants born in, in lands that have become a part of the kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes or Austria after the war changed also due to their respective statuses. They were now foreign citizens. Out of a total of 50 servants born in areas that were after the war included in the kingdom, of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, as many as 40 women had Yugoslav citizenship. Uh, three women opted for Italian citizenship. The status of four servants is unknown, and three servants were granted Italian citizenship as wives or widows of Italian men. It is important to ha highlight that women's status and citizenship in the post-war period was an extremely delicate, uh, delicate le uh, legal question. Legal codes, including the Italian Legal Code of uh, 1863, mostly stipulated that a married woman, uh, woman obtained her hu husband's citizenship. On the other hand, no specific course of action was stipulated for an unmarried uh, woman, or her status was contingent upon that of her father. Such legal regulations put women throughout Europe in a highly dependent, vulnerable position. This is particularly the case in areas whose state borders were subject to change after the war. Servants in the sample at hand were a specific group among <coughs> all servants that worked in Trieste also in terms of their demographic features. Compared to the entire sample for the uh, year 1921 in a, and a similar group for 1910, they were a great deal older. Their mean age was 38. We have reliable data uh, for many of them that they relocated to Trieste before 1915. Typically, the pre-war period in Trieste saw the majority of servants uh, from Habsburg provinces arrive to the city to earn their dowry, whereupon they returned home and got married. Uh, what we recognize as a life cycle 
patterns. However, this was less true for the period after the war. Uh, this group of women at that point consisted, uh, consisted of elderly and married servants who lived permanently uh, in Trieste. Can we thus assume, this is a question, uh, a research question, uh, uh, with the, the prevailing life cycle phenomena, there is also a form of life cycle, uh, a lifelong uh, servanthood in Trieste. This is attested also by many archival documents, for instance, the story of Anna Zupancic. She worked as a cook for Miss, uh, Mrs. Witz for two and a half years. In 1920, Anna used her time off to visit her family in the kingdom uh, of uh, serfs and so on. She asked for permission to return to her post after, after her time off uh, comes to an end. Mr. Dietz vouched for her, emphasizing that Anna Zupancic was trustworthy since she had been working as a servant in Trieste for more than two decades. We also checked whether servants for, from our sample at hand were employed by specific profile of employers. There are not distinctive, uh, distinctive features <coughs> regarding the place of birth of these employers. Contrary to our expectations, there was no significant number of individuals who would originate from the countries of the former Austro-Hungary them, uh, themselves. Despite uh, the long-standing public pressure which imposed such national planning, Italian masters employed servants who did not just originate from Slovene-speaking environment, but were actually foreign Yugoslav citizens. However, employers also stood out in a general, uh, as well as servants, this is another feature, stood out in a generational sense. They were usually individuals of older generations who generally lived of annuities or received, uh, received pensions. At this point, it should be noted that in the case of Tiesta, the migration routes from surrounding Slovenia and Belgium that went under Italy after the war remained open. Nonetheless, the political pressure was sent also amongst them. But to return to those potential terms that were cut off with the border. What happened to this redundant workforce? Was, for instance, the influx from Carmela formerly directed to Trieste in part diverted to Ljubljana? Research suggests that. But at the same time, shows that the surplus of workforce did not employ the servants in Ljubljana. Not. Instead, they opted for other professions, partly that of lower, uh, lower officials or textile and tobacco workers, which we heard about in the presentation of Ursula okay. To conclude, even though the servants belonged to those strata of society that were significantly less politicized than teachers of officials, as we will hear in uh, other presentations, uh, the post-war political changes did affect them. Statistically, the uh, data indicate a reduction in their number, and secondly, their traditional legal roads were cut off. A, by the new, newly established borders, B, the direct political pressures of the new authorities. In Trieste remain only those servants from Italia or Austria who have worked in the city even before the war. After the war, they represented a special demographical uh, category. Firstly, they were older, their employer, employers were older, and in many cases, they have no Italian citizenship. The continuation of our research is uh, directed towards researching the causes and the consequences of this lack of citizenship, and we will uh, present this on the next, next conference. Thank you.